If you're learning a new language, it can sometimes be tiring to go to a class, read a book. If this is true for you, it might be a good idea to start watching movies in English. So guys, in this lesson, let's watch a great scene of a movie together and learn some pronunciation tips, vocabulary, idioms, and expressions. Hey, hey, you guys ready to go? Not quite. Monica's still at the salon and I'm just finishing packing. Dude, you're not taking your Bible? <laughs> hey, hey, you guys ready to go? Not quite. Monica's still at the salon and I'm just finishing packing. Dude, you're not taking your Bible? <laughs> not quite. Not quite means not completely or entirely. For example, my hair's not quite dry, which means not completely dry. Salon. As you can see in this picture, salon is an establishment where a hairdresser, beautician, or courtroom conducts business. Salon. Pack. Here, pack means to put something into a bag, box, etc., especially when you travel to other places. For example, we are leaving early tomorrow morning, so you'd better pack, which means put clothes and other possessions into suitcases or bags tonight. That's the meaning of pack. You're not supposed to take that. Besides, it's a New Testament. What are you going to do with it? Learn about Jesus. <laughs> You're not supposed to take that. Besides, it's a New Testament. What are you going to do with it? Learn about Jesus. <laughs> to be supposed to, that this is a very nice grammatical structure, which means to be intended to. For example, we were supposed to have gone away this week. But Debbie sick, so we couldn't go. Besides. Besides here means in addition to or also. For example, I'm much too old for you, he said. And besides, I'm married. Testament. Testament is a proof that something exists or is true. For example, these positive results are a testament to the strength of the technology sector. Testament. Hey! So, did you talk to Joey? Uh, no, no, I couldn't find him. I, I'm just going to talk to him on the plane. Okay. Sounds like a good idea, Dr. Geller. Hey! So, did you talk to Joey? Uh, no, no, I couldn't find him. I, I'm just gonna talk to him on the plane. Okay. Sounds like a good idea, Dr. Geller. Sounds like. I love this phrase. Sounds like means to seem like something from what is said or written. For example, that sounds like a good idea. Or, it sounds like you have a sore throat. On the plane, when referring to a car, we tend to say in the car. For example, I'm in the car. But when it comes to plane, we say I'm on the plane. So guys, remember the preposition of plane is on, on the plane. Stop it. <laughs> PhD. You're filthy. Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Stop it. PhD. You're filthy. Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Filthy. Filthy means extremely or unpleasantly dirty, something that is very dirty. For example, wash your hands, they're filthy. Or we can say, look at this tablecloth. It's filthy. It's very dirty. Uh, no, actually, I think she went to the salon. Oh, yeah. Oh, she went to the salon, all right. 
Check it out. <laughs> Whose day just got better? Uh, no, actually, I think she went to the salon. Oh, yeah. Oh, she went to the salon, all right. Check it out. <laughs> Whose day just got better? Check it out. Check it out is used to direct somebody's attention to something. For example, check it out. They have got that new book in stock. Chandler! Hey! Ah! What do you think? I think... I think I can see your scalp. Chandler! Hey! Ah! What do you think? I think... I think I can see your scalp. Scalp. As you can see in this picture, scalp is the skin on the top of the person's head where hair usually grows. This is called scalp. <laughs> Don't you just love it? J yeah, yeah, you, you got shellfish in your head. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something. You go, girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you got shellfish in your head. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something. You go, girlfriend. Shellfish. As you can see in this picture, guys, shellfish are sea creatures that live in shells and that are eaten as food or one of these creatures. Lobsters, crabs, oysters are all shellfish. You go! This is an American English spoken informal use to encourage a girl or woman or to say that you agree with what she is saying. You go! And listen to this! What do you know? It's a treat for the eyes and the ears. <laughs> and listen to this! What do you know? It's a treat for the eyes and the ears. <laughs> treat for the eyes or ears. This is something that is impressive and enjoyable to look at or hear. So when we speak about something that is enjoyable to look at or hear, we can say that's a treat for the eyes or ears. Wow, it's a... Uh... Kind of weird that I'm sitting next to Charlie after we broke up. Yeah, it's almost as if Air Barbados doesn't care about your social life. <laughs> wow, it's uh, kind of weird that I'm sitting next to Charlie after we broke up. Yeah, it's almost as if Air Barbados doesn't care about your social life. <laughs> weird. Weird means very strange and unusual, unexpected or not natural. Weird. For example, her boyfriend is a, is a little weird, but she's nice. Breakup. Breakup. If a marriage breaks up or two people in a romantic relationship break up, their marriage or their relationship ends. For example, Jenny and George have broken up. They have ended their relationship. Look, does someone mind switching and sitting with Charlie? Oh, I, I mean, I... Dude, I spent the whole conference with Charlie. Yeah, I understand. No, I'll do it. Look, does someone mind switching and sitting with Charlie? Oh, I, I mean, I... Dude, I spent the whole conference with Charlie. Yeah, I understand. No, I'll do it. Do you mind? Do you mind is used to politely ask someone to do something. For example, would you mind waiting outside? So I'm politely asking him to wait outside. You know, once we're in the air and the captain turns off the seatbelt sign, you feel free to roam about my cabin. <laughs> and you should be careful when checking your overhead bins. Um, you know, once we're in the air and the captain turns off the seatbelt sign, you feel free to roam about my cabin. <laughs> and you should be careful when checking your overhead bins. Roam. If somebody's hands or eyes roam, 
They touch or look in many different places, especially in a sexual way or when they should not do this. For example, she enjoys his company, but occasionally he lets his hands roam where they shouldn't. As you can see in this picture, this is called overhead bins. Overhead bins is a common compartment located above seats, which is meant to store the luggage of the passengers. Overhead bins. You don't have to go home tonight, do you? No, I think I could come over. Saturday, right? Oh. What? You don't have to go home tonight, do you? No, I think I could come over. Saturday, right? Oh. What? Come over. Come over means to come to a place, move from one place to another, or we can say to move towards someone. For example, is your family coming over from Greece for the wedding? Um, I can't, I can't do anything tonight. Why not? I have a date. You have a, you have a date? With who? Oh, it's, um, I can't, I can't do anything tonight. Why not? I have a date. You have a, you have a date? With who? Oh, it's, Date. Date is a person you have a romantic meeting with. For example, who's your date for the prom? This is probably none of my business, but um, how long do you think you're going to keep seeing her? <laughs> I'll tell her that it's over tonight at dinner. I, I promise. Oh, okay. Good. You do that. This is probably none of my business, but um, how long do you think you're going to keep seeing her? <laughs> I'll tell her that it's over tonight at dinner. I, I promise. Oh, okay. Good. You do that. It's none of one's business. If something is none of someone's business, he or she doesn't need to know about it. For example, stop pestering me. It's none of your business. Over. Over means finished, especially of an event. For example, I'll be glad when the competition is over, which means finished. Oh yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning English with us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you wouldn't miss the new lessons. You can watch our new lessons on Sundays and Thursdays. Find our new English online courses at EnglishFitCourses.com. See you in the next lesson.